Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter, and today we're going to be talking about fonts. Um, before we do that, though, if you haven't subscribed, please do. I really appreciate all the support that I can get from you guys. All right, so let's get started. Um, I'm super excited to show you this because I would say for the last, um, outside of the last eight weeks that I've been doing this, or seven weeks, um, I've pretty much been really lazy about my fonts and have used like the same five maybe even the same three for the last, I don't know, year. <laughs> so um, I've challenged myself this, you know, recently to every Friday, find a new font, share it with you guys. And, uh, you know, I've really enjoyed it. So here are my seven last fonts that I have used. Um, I don't know them by name, but if you go to my Instagram account, you can see my highlights and I have all the links to each one of these fonts. Uh, what I really wanted to show you though is no matter the style or the, you know, the type of font, what I like to do is I like to layer. So you can see each one of these has layers and some of these fonts are super thin. So um, with the thin one, like this one for Kim, that top layer is so thin that it's going to stay flat. So the gold is on top of the white and it's just glued on there. I do use Barely Art Glue and let me show you what that looks like in case you don't know. Um, here is Barely Art Glue. I like it because I always have the precision tip on. It is super thin and it comes out really nicely and it, I had to peel it off because I don't always remember to put my cap back on and it dries up. But let me show you how thin it is. So here is, yeah, you can see that. So I have a lot of control. It comes out easy. I'm just squeezing with literally my thumb and I'll show you this. I mean, normally I have, I hold it like this and it gives me a lot of control over these thin, intricate details, but I can squeeze it like with just these two, like just barely and it comes out. And you can see how thin because I barely squeezed it, you can get it to be that thin. You have a lot of control over this bottle, which I like. Um, okay, the other thing is it dries clear. It also dries relatively quickly. There's still wiggle room. I can move, shift things around a little bit, um, but then it dries, so it's, you know, it's, it's really easy. Um, what I would recommend, though, is like when you have thin items like this, when you go to glue it down, I would just hold, keep my fingers down for a couple seconds like this. And so what it does is it just gets all the corners to adhere to the bottom piece and it dries, like I said, within seconds. So that way you don't have anything sticking up. So like I would just hold it like this for a couple seconds, let go. Um, and yeah, there's no warping, anything like that. So I, this is definitely the glue that I use for this. Now, for anything that you can put your foam squares like this from the Dollar Tree or on Amazon, I like to do that because then you get your layers. So from any kind of angle except straight on, you you know, straight on you can't tell that it's layered, but at any other degree, you can see it's just so pretty. It adds a lot. Um, I will weld on a little hole so that I can stick a present like uh, for a gift tag, a keychain, anything like that so that you can, you know, when you gift it to someone, it's really cute. Um, on this one, this is the font that I'm actually going to show you how to download, how to upload into Design Space, and also how to do the offset. So that's going to be today's today's it's really a design space tutorial but i wanted to give you this piece of it so that you kind of understand what i'm doing in design space and why i'm doing so many different layers now for this one i love this one it's so stinking cute it was for a dinosaur birthday party and so um if you notice like the e the e is one two three four four pieces of the letter e um the the C is one, two, three, three pieces. The H is another three pieces. So just that alone is a ton of pieces, right? And look at that right there. That is um, the space between the leg and the tail. 
it's this tiny little thing. I mean, look how small that is compared to my, I'll put it next to my pinky. It's so stinking small. It's like a cuticle. Um, it's really hard to cut on cardstock and to keep track of that piece. So my top layer for this is actually heat transfer vinyl. So iron on, uh, HTV. So basically I weeded it and then just pressed it with my mini. And so that top layer, the blue onto the white is just HTV on cardstock, but the rest of it is layered. So you can see, and you know, I'm years into crafting at this point. My craft style has changed a lot. I used to be like, I used to love my chunky offsets. Like everything was would be humongous. <laughs> but I have since just, I don't know, my tastes have changed. So now I'm into the thinner uh, offsets, not the thin fonts. Like I still like my chunky fonts and, you know, chunky letters and thin, but my offset is thinner so you could see like you can see just a little bit of the next color um and so i'll show you that in design space but that is that is a style a preference there's no right or wrong it's what you like um so you can see all of them have the the foam the foam tape What's nice about adding the different layers too is you have a little bit more stability. So like this, this one is, you know, it's steady, right? This one's three layers. This one is um, technically five layers, but that HTV on the cardstock is kind of like one layer. But all right, I think you get the idea. This one has a little hole through it. I put ribbon on it. This one, I made a duplicate, but this, then tied to a purse strap and it was a birthday present. So you can see you could do so much with it. It's a lot of fun. All right, I'm gonna flip the camera. Hello. <laughs> All right, let me make this smaller and we're gonna go into design space. All right, so let's talk about Creative Fabrica. So Creative Fabrica, um, they have a dollar trial period they recently updated it, so it went. Uh, it is now a dollar for seven days for you to try it. In those seven days, you can basically download as many fonts as you want to try. You can download all those fonts that we just um, that I just showed you, or not, or you can download all the SVG files, whatever. Um, a dollar for the whole week, for the whole seven days, for you to decide whether or not you like it. If you like it, like I do, I have the membership. So by using my link, if you end up keeping the membership, it automatically ap applies the 30% off. So I have the like, the the most expensive, the most, you know, it, it allows you to download everything. Um, it's normally $29. So with the discount, I believe it's $19 a month, just so you know. All right, so uh, try out that link, at least for the seven days, and just see if you like it. I like it because I also have Cricut Access because it's just so convenient to have all those images in there, but I very, very rarely use Cricut fonts. The only ones that I use is for like the print, um, but I like my, you know, I, I find that the fonts on there I don't love as much, so anyway. Um, the other thing with Creative Fabrica is that uh, it has commercial usage is allowed. So basically, um, you know, if I were to use this font, I can put it onto my cake topper and I can sell my cake topper. So it allows me to use the fonts in my projects and still sell the actual project, not selling the font. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here is the dinosaur font. Because I have the membership, everything that I go on here will just say download. If you don't have the membership, it will tell you how much it is to buy it. Uh, but regardless, when you go to download it, it will be the same. And this is going to be similar to whether you're downloading from Etsy um, or any other site. Okay. All right. So download. The other thing I want to show you is every font that is available on Creative Fabrica. You can scroll down and you can type in the name or the word and... Um, you can then see what it looks like in that font. So it's kind of nice, like, you know, if, you, um, if you're not sure you want it. But that is also why I have Font Cloud also. 
font cloud is free it's up here and I'll show you that now as well because <laughs> it's so cool if you're if you're looking at fonts right now so for uh, font cloud you have to have an account the account is free so this is not tied to your membership um, but let's open up font cloud it is how I manage my fonts so I'm gonna show you first I'm gonna type in Charlotte what's nice about this is I can type in whatever um, you know name or word that I'm gonna be working on for my project, and then I will get to see it in all the fonts that I have. So, you know, I can decide, oh, I like this one, it's called Bestie. This is great because I craft on multiple devices. So you know when you're downloading, for instance, we just downloaded the dinosaur font, it is only on my desktop. If I now go use my iPad or my laptop, it won't be on there. But if I use Font Cloud, I can log into Font Cloud and I can easily download it through Font Cloud. So, for instance, if my desktop died and I replace it uh, with my laptop, I won't remember before I used to keep a spreadsheet of all my fonts. Now I can just go onto my new device, log into Font Cloud, and I will have all of these available to me. So I don't need to download it all at once, but for instance, if I wanna use birthday balloons, I can click on birthday balloons, and now I can download the font. I don't have to remember where I got it from or which device has it. <laughs> I can just now work by project and then download when I need to. So that is why I love it. Now, let's go. So um, it is a zip file, right? We downloaded it. I'm gonna click on the pick list here and show in folder. I'm gonna go into the folder, double click it because it's a zipped file. I'm now gonna double click on it so that I can install the font. It's already installed because I've already done it, but you would just click yes, okay? So I'm gonna get out of it. But So now it's installed onto my desktop or onto this computer. Now I'm gonna move Dinosaur into my downloads. So I'm taking it from a zip file and just extracting this file and putting it into my downloads. And actually what I want is the open type font. When you have an option, do your open type font, okay? When you don't have an option, then you just do what you have. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna go back into Font Cloud. The reason why I did that is I'm gonna go to Browse and I'm gonna upload this font into Font Cloud so that it is now going to be available whenever I log in. So I'm just gonna double click on it. And it is now here. So that means whichever device I log into, log into Font Cloud on, I will now be able to download Dinosaur. It will be here, okay? All right, um, let's go into Design Space. Okay, let's go into New, replace it. And I already have it open. So because it's already open, I actually need to close out of design space. It will not be in there. All you need to do is open it back up. So now I'm gonna type design, open. And now every, now my dinosaur uh, font will be available. So I'm gonna go into new project. I didn't show you because I had already uploaded it at, at another time, right? So, okay, let's go to text. I'm gonna go to the pick list in font and type in dino, and here's my dinosaur. Double click on it. Double click on this, and I'm gonna change it to Charlotte. And I'm just gonna make it big for now so that we can actually see it for the purpose of this tutorial. Um, click on this and go to offset. It automatically defaults to 0.25. I personally like my fonts, like I said earlier, a lot thinner these days. I go anywhere between 0.05 to 0.10. So um, I don't know what it is about this font. It doesn't offset really well. <laughs> like it's constantly thinking. So I'm gonna change this font. I'm gonna do a new one and let's go to, um, I'm gonna go to Donut. Okay, so here's this font. 
Let's see if this one works better today. Um, I'm gonna go to offset. See, it so quickly, I don't know what it is about the dinosaur font. It has worked obviously because I've done the project. So this is 0.25, you see how thick, how chunky it is? I'm actually gonna go to 0 0.05 and let's and hit tab. So you can kind of see, here's the problem with the really thin offset. You see how my offset doesn't connect to any letters. So it would then be separate, right? So let's, we have a couple options. I'm gonna cancel for a second. Our first option is to move the letters closer to each other. So you can go into letter space and decrease the letter space. And you see how my letters are moving closer to each other. The X and the T right here are practically touching. But you can see that between the T and the E, there's a bigger gap. Between the E and the X, it's a bigger gap than these two. I actually don't like that it's touching so much, so I'm gonna increase and just get it out there. Now, what we can do though, is we can ungroup it and move the X and the T closer, grab the EXT and move it closer. Now, if I grab all of this and go to offset, let's do the 0 0.05 and see what it does. And it's not updating. Let's see if we move this dial. Okay, so when I move the dial, it starts to update, right? Let's see if it does it now. Gosh, it's really acting up right now, but I'm just gonna continue to move the dial. All right, so at 0.11, this is touching. So I do like my offset, the next layer to touch, because it's so much easier for it to be one piece, and then I put my single letters on top, and then I'm gonna start um, you know, adding the foam, the foam tape. So let's see if I can get this even closer. Okay, so that's still touching. I like it. It's 0.09. Let's see. Okay, let's see if I can be really careful with this. Okay. I feel like at 0 0.08, this is what I can do right now. I'm going to apply because it's not acting the way I want it to. I'm going to mimic this with my to match my dinosaur one. So my top layer was blue. And oops, no, my top, oh, where is it? My top layer was blue, sorry. My offset here is white, okay? And I am gonna make all of that blue, okay? Here's my offset. I'm gonna get rid of this one. For, um, okay, so now here's my offset. I'm gonna do another offset. When I do that next offset, it defaults to whatever my last offset was. So it's 0 0.08. Let me see if I can do 0 0.05 on this one and see if it updates. It doesn't look like it does. I'm just gonna apply. Okay, so this next one is black. I'm gonna change it to what I did with my dinosaur. I'm gonna change it to orange. Now here, this next layer if you really want it to be extra, but you don't want to keep making it so big, I would just duplicate this maybe two times, okay? That's just going to give you a lot of layers, okay? I'm going to just put it to the side. Then on this one, I'm going to do my last offset. My last offset was blue glitter cardstock. I'm going to apply, and I'm going to change it to a different color blue so that when it cuts, it's gonna be different than the HTV because the HTV, you're gonna to need to mirror it. So you're not gonna cut the blues on the same mat, right? Because it's different material. Not only is it um, a different cut, um, like a different cut material, because you're gonna have different pressure on it because one's HTV. My blue one was glitter cardstock. So it's definitely gonna be a different cut setting. Um, so I'm just gonna change the blue. So there you have it, right? If you wanna add like that little cut circle so that you can run ribbon through it or a keychain through it, what you're, wanna, what you're gonna wanna do is, you have a couple different options. You can add that circle to the last layer or what I did for the dinosaur was because I have that mid layer 
was three three layers, right? I got the two orange plus the actual orange in there, right? That one's gonna be really thick. This one would be a good one to um, to actually add that that circle through because it will have three layers. Your ribbon won't rip through it and it'll be really steady. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to move that layer up here. Okay, I'm gonna grab all three and let's align it and center it. And I'm gonna group it for now, okay? So that I can make sure everything is stacked perfectly, okay? Let's go and bring in your shape and bring in a circle. And go ahead and make that circle like the size that you want it. This is really thick right now. I'm gonna put it right, well, let's center it, okay? So I'm gonna to go to a line and I'm gonna center it horizontally. So this is right in the middle of the word, okay? Um, and let's duplicate this circle and make it smaller so that we can slice out that hole, okay? We can do something like that. I'm gonna center my circle. Looks good, right? Let's grab the circles and slice it. Oops. So now I have my circle. I'm gonna put it back here and let's um, align, center horizontally. So it's in where it's centered. I almost wanna move it over to here and just so that it is structurally sound. It's touching my E and my X, I feel like that's better. Okay, so now I'm going to duplicate this because I have three layers, right? I'm gonna move this up here. I'm gonna grab my circles and, oops, I'm gonna align it. Okay, and I'm also going to group this. So now these are good, right? I'm going to take one circle, one tab. At, wait, hold on. Let me delete these. I'm going to take one tab, hit the shift key, one orange, and I'm going to weld it. Take the next one and this one, and I'm going to weld it. This ensures that each one is the same. Um, you know what else I could have done? That would have been easier. Just welded one and then duplicated it. This is good practice though. <laughs> All right, there, I've got three perfectly good ones. Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, I should have just done one and duplicated it, right? But it's kind of good practice to know how you could do that. I don't know. <laughs> the more tools you have in your, in your brain, then I don't know, that's gonna, that's gonna work at some point. Okay, I've got everything here. Now you go to make it. So let's go to make it just so that you can see it. Here's my white layer. That's the one that I'm gonna iron onto, right? Here's my layer with the, with the little hole in it. It's got three layers, good. This one is another layer. This one, this one's my top layer in HTV. This is a problem, let's go cancel out of it. I want my HTV, oops, I moved this, right? Okay, let's move these out of the way. I actually want my HTV to cut out in this, in this row, so I'm gonna grab these and I uh, let's attach it because now when we go to make it, it will be in the right order. We're gonna just mirror it it will cut like this you're gonna weed it like that it's gonna press as one piece you don't have to line things up so that's the other thing that's nice about having that HTV as a top layer is you know it's gonna be perfectly straight and aligned because it's all gonna go together as one all right I hope that was helpful that's how you do it that's how you layer it that's how I don't know I love the way it looks at the end if you don't add the foam squares you're gonna have all those layers, but it's gonna sit really flat. And um, again, it's personal preference, so I'm not gonna say it doesn't look nice because you might like that. 
I personally love my layers with the foam squares in between. All right, <laughs> comments, questions, please post them. Um, any special requests, all of that, please post it. I will definitely read it. See you guys next time. Bye.